Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. What you are looking at is the 15 minute chart of silver. And we're going to spend some time on the technicals. Uh, am I back? Yeah, I'm going to try to be back for a while. We'll see what happens. Um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, why haven't you been making videos? There's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons to start making videos again. Um, actually about 13 years ago, well, um, this channel, Brother John F, I think I signed up in 2007, but started acting, uh, actively making videos, I think in 2011. So these two channels, the Bitcoin channel, which by the way, trying to find this, I could barely find the channel. They buried this so deep. But uh, these two were basically started about 13 years ago, actually right about 13 years ago to the day. Um, so what's changed? Well, by way of review, I found actually looking at the oldest uh, video that I put up it was an extra normal video clip between Sarah Palin and Larry King, a little discussion. So I'm going to play this by way of review, I think it's still fairly accurate. So we'll listen to this and then I'll get back. Every year? Because the government spends m commission okay. report? Gonna start it over. Have you heard about the debt commission report? No, what is that? It is a bipartisan report commissioned by the President Obama to find ways to reduce the government debt. Debt? Why does the government have a debt? Because the government runs a deficit every year. Why does the government run a deficit every year? Because the government spends more money every year than it brings in through taxes. So why doesn't the government just raise the taxes so it has enough money? Because the government is run by politicians. And politicians have to be elected to be in power. If the politicians ran on a platform of raising taxes they would be defeated. So instead of raising taxes, the politicians borrow the money. But why do the politicians need all of that money? The politicians need all that money so that they can spend it on people who will bribe them. Why would politicians want to be bribed? Because politicians need money to get elected, and they use the bribe money to buy elections. So who do the politicians borrow the money from? The politicians borrow money from the bond market. And who runs the bond market? The government through the treasury runs the bond market. But who buys the bonds that are sold on the bond market? People who want to lend money to the government. But why would people want to lend money to the government when it is running endless deficits? Well, actually, people are not that stupid. It is mainly foreign governments and pension funds who lend money to the government. And why would pension funds or foreign governments lend money to the U.S. government? Because the pension funds are actually controlled by liars and crooks like Bill Gross of PIMCO. And the foreign governments like China and Japan are throwing good money after bad hoping that it will turn around. If governments like China and Japan stop believing that it will turn around, won't they stop lending money to the U.S. government? Yes, those governments have already cut off their lending to the U.S. government for that very reason. So if the foreign governments have stopped lending to the U.S. government because it keeps spending more money than it has, where is the government getting its money from? The government is borrowing money directly from the Federal Reserve. And where does the Federal Reserve get its money from that it lends to the U.S. government? The Federal Reserve creates the money out of thin air. But if the Federal Reserve creates the money out of thin air, won't the other governments worry about the value of that money? Yes, they will. In fact, Russia and China just signed a trade deal that is outside of the U.S. dollar because they don't trust the U.S. government to stop debasing its currency. So if foreign governments stop lending money to the U.S. government, and the only money to fund the deficit comes from the Federal Reserve, isn't the U.S. government really just printing money? Yes, the U.S. government is already bankrupt and is simply printing the money required to fund its everyday operations. But if the U.S. government is already bankrupt, then why are the interest rates so low on U.S. government debt? Because the U.S. government is buying its own debt in the bond market to keep interest rates low. But aren't the bond vigilantes supposed to police the bond market to keep that from happening? Yes, but if all the players in the U.S. bond market are smaller than the U.S. government, 
then they cannot sell enough to affect the U.S. interest rates. So if the U.S. government is keeping the interest rates artificially low by buying their own debt, then what keeps the U.S. dollar from collapsing on the forex markets? The reason the U.S. dollar is not collapsing on the forex markets is because the U.S. dollar index is based on a basket of currencies which are falling harder than the U.S. dollar. But if the U.S. dollar is essentially worthless, then why does it still have value? Because since 1971 when Nixon closed the gold window, all currencies are valued in terms of each other. They are free-floating, and are only related to each other in terms of value. But isn't the euro backed by one-third gold? And if so, isn't the euro a much stronger currency than the U.S. dollar? Yes, the euro is much more like a true currency than the U.S. dollar because it is one-third backed by gold. But if the euro is such a stronger currency than the U.S. dollar, then why do we see daily headlines about weakness in European nations like the pigs? Ireland just folded to the IMF for a $120 billion bailout, even though her people were opposed. Because, if the US government can make EU nations look weak, then it can divert world attention from its own insolvency. But if the US government is insolvent, then how does it help it to direct attention to the EU governments? Because, if the U.S. government can make the world look over at Europe, then it can distract the world from looking at its insolvency. But why does the U.S. government want to make the world look at Europe as insolvent when it is in the worst shape of all of them? Because the U.S. government is doing everything it can do to stave off collapse. Soon the world will know the U.S. has run the greatest Ponzi scheme in history. And then what will happen? then the U.S. dollar will collapse and become worthless. And if the U.S. dollar becomes worthless, how will we buy all our junk from China? You won't. So that was 13 years ago, I think roughly, to the, uh, actually to the day. And uh, how accurate was it? Well, I, I think you could debate the information on Europe. Uh, I think described in the video was to destroy Europe through just all crappy financial policies and now it appears to be through war. So pretty accurate video considering it was 13 years ago. Um, and what was the advice 13 years ago? Well, this channel actually was called Silver for the People. I think it got renamed somehow and it's just called Brother John F. But the original was Silver for the People. I think the saying that I came up with was Silver is a stake in the heart of the financial vampires. Silver is the bullet that slays the Wall Street werewolves. And, and then I also applied that same um, statement to Bitcoin. Now, I started covering Bitcoin. I think you can see here the first video was silver bucks foray into bitcoin and that was on the first price run up to fifty dollars uh, i think we fell back to six or so something like that um so yeah not much has changed now i'm gonna do a video this i'm not gonna do a video on bitcoin right now um there's just too much to say too much has changed and the story is too deep so we'll go into that probably in a video tomorrow um i'm gonna try to cover silver right now and that's because things have finally changed now i, I wanted to um give a big shout out of praise to the uh recently passed away sadly ted butler and ted butler was actually the person who opened my eyes to this whole thing. He was the reason why I started making videos in the first place. And he was the reason that I started making Silver for the People. Uh, and the idea, R remember, the idea behind Silver for the People is that the people have the power to destroy the current corrupt, hideous, monstrous, evil financial system. Um, now, coincidentally, I actually believe the same thing about Bitcoin. Um, as you know, I'm a Christian and I'm going to do Christian content as well. So hopefully when I come back, I'm going to start to break my videos down by topic. I'll maybe section them between silver, 
uh, Bitcoin and then Christian content. But so I personally believe that probably Bitcoin as well is uh, uh, kind of a divine appointed, uh, a divine appointment with destiny for these people. And, but I'll go into that more tomorrow when I try to explain what's going on with Bitcoin. Um, but let's go to silver. This is now I keep a trading view chart of silver and uh, this is the 15 minute view. So you can see the trend lines that I've drawn. Um, we recently pushed through $30. You can see the high right here. We hit 32.50. And uh, looking at the 15 minute, you can see we crossed this downtrend line that I've drawn here. This is uh, kind of the pullback. Now the pullback went back down to, we'll just say 28.50. Uh, so we ran to $32.50 back down to $28.50 and we're sitting right now at about $30.60. So what we want to do is kind of pull out, get the big picture. Now I have an indicator on here. I really only use two indicators. I use the MACD and that's really not my favorite indicator. My favorite indicator is called No Sure Thing. And it's kind of a mix between the MACD and uh, some other indicators. But oh, I guess they don't want me to, not gonna let me put an indicator. Uh, maybe I'm not signed in. Um, yeah. So they're not gonna let me put an indicator on here. But um, that's the one I usually use and uh, we'll go into what the indicators are saying in another video. But on the 15 minute view, you can see this is fairly normal price action when you've made a new high. Pulling out to the 30 minute, you can see I've drawn a, a line at $30. It's very close to $30. It's at this old high that we put in when we made a recent run at 30 um, back in April. So you can see when we took that out right here, we decisively took it out. It shot straight through 30 up to 32.50 and now we're backing and filling. And so you can see here that we kind of came into support. If you consider support around here at 28.50, then this is pretty normal action that I would expect to see. So let's pull back out a little bit farther. Let's go to the one hour view. And the one hour view shows us that uh, we have a rising trend from that 2250 low. Uh, there's a lower low, of course, the COVID low. Uh, but from the $22 low that was put in uh, in February, uh, it's been pretty much a steady rise. And uh, I need to draw in that trend line. We don't currently have that. Um, they'll probably want me to sign up to do that as well. But yeah, something like this right in there. So we may be having kind of a rising pennant, looking like a rising pennant, looking like a cup and handle. Um, nothing really standing in the way, at least on this chart. Now, remember, we're looking for overhead resistance and we're looking for underlying support. Now, there's a lot of reasons why those don't really apply to silver. And uh, we'll go into those as we get farther out. So let's jump to the two hour. Uh, not much change. We just, we get that $26 that comes in. $26 is an important price because that was a price that on the way down, it couldn't seem to get down through it for a couple of years. And then it finally penetrated that. Pulling out to the four hour. Uh, now we're starting to get into seeing some long-term trend lines. These are drawn, you'll see as we go farther out, these are drawn from way back. But these two converge, the actual convergence point is still in the future, but they we broke out to the upside before these two trend lines converged. And it was actually the breakout from that 22 when we went into 24, and we're still just rising on that. Again, we're not really seeing anything in terms of support and resistance, 
on this chart, support is actually going to be that $26 level. So let's pull out to the daily. And you can see on the daily, um, now we're actually able to see resistance. So this area is the area that I was talking about where we ran up, this is back in 2011, remember we ran up a very rapid rise uh, and this was associated with the, um, actually this was after the financial crisis. So this is associated with the money printing that came in after the financial crisis. A lot of us were stacking silver back in 2009, and I actually remember this night when silver touched $8.50, uh, and I got my buffaloes for $12.50. So there was a 50% premium on physical silver, and it only was available for a night and things shut down. So silver really has not hit, real silver has not really gone below $15 for many, many, many years. You can't get it for under that. Um, but back to the support and resistance. So this area was created between the price of 26 and 50. And that's the main body of what we need to get through to rise through the old $50, which I think almost all the silver bugs are, you know, that's what everyone's expecting is a rise through that $50 price. Remember that... Silver is, I think you could say silver, you could maybe find another commodity, but silver is, is probably the only commodity that's still down 40% from its all-time high, um, even with the current inflation and borderline hyperinflation that we're looking at here in the U.S. So this area here between 26 and 50, this is this is what we have to fight through if we have overhead resistance. Now remember... Uh, when I used to do videos on Jesse Livermore, the original Wall Street trader, uh, Livermore was the first one to really discover and explain support and resistance. And it's a pretty simple concept. It just has to do with previous investors. So when a market, whether it's a stock or a bond, now we are going to talk about how that's different with stocks, bonds, and commodities. But in general... Uh, overhead resistance is previous buyers who bought at a higher price who are looking to get out at even or close to even and they sell into rallies. So if we had traditional overhead resistance in silver, and I'm going to argue that we don't, but if we did, then when we start to get into the price of 26 through really this range here is between 26 and 35. We're going to expect to see sellers come in and sell uh, and get out of this worthless market or whatever they believe. Um, it's, it's going to be hard to argue that over a 13-year time frame that there's still people hanging around um, who bought around 30 bucks or 26 to 30 bucks, 26 to 35 bucks. And they're like, oh, finally, I can sell this worthless silver and get out. I, so I don't think that overhead resistance is going to function the same way in a rising silver bull market. But that's the theory. So some of the key price targets we're looking at here is obviously $35. If we get to $35, then that narrows, narrows our window of price action that traded above it to really just a few months in 2011. And uh, that's going to be a very, very bullish sign. So I really don't see much resistance, uh, if there is any at all. I don't think so. So we're just going to pull out a little bit farther out to the weekly. And the weekly is actually, I, I don't know how accurate these bars are, but the weekly supposedly takes us all the way back to 1802 which is interesting because you can see a spike to $4 back in about 1860 at the Civil War, uh, apparently. Don't quote me on this, and all you silver bug historians, maybe check it out and let me know in the comments. But apparently silver spiked up to uh, 4 bucks during the um, Lincoln inflation, maybe that's what we'll call it. Uh, it's so interesting that when I started getting interested in really buying silver was back when it was four dollars 
in uh, it actually had not yeah it was right around four dollars um, back in the early 2000s this one was when a lot of the old school people uh, Bob Chapman and many others were talking about that there, there's going to be a bull market in the precious metals and they were absolutely right you can see just on the silver chart that we ran from four dollars to fifty dollars in a space of about maybe about seven years and um, so I started my channel in 2007 uh, when I saw this it looked like we were in a silver bull market started releasing videos in 2011 after this um, event that occurred in the spring of 2011 if you weren't around um, basically uh, earlier in December of the previous year a couple of hedge funds got in trouble Bear Stearns hedge funds got in trouble now, according to Bix Weir and others, um, I don't know for sure. I don't know if anyone knows for sure. It was uh, Bear Stearns that was actually active in the silver manipulation scheme, uh, the suppression uh, scheme uh, of selling paper silver to suppress the price of the physical, which is still happening today. But it, I, I believe it's weakening. And that's one of the reasons for coming back. Uh, but where was I? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm rambling. So uh, back in 2011, we had a run from about, uh, from 2004 to 2011, about seven years, we ran from four to 50 bucks. And then in the spring of that year, we had uh, the, what was it? The capture of bin Laden and uh, release of Obama's birth certificate and 11 simultaneous silver future contract margin increases at night. And that day actually marked the beginning of this bear market in silver when we touched around 50 bucks. And we've basically been in a bear market since. Now, um, it's taken a long time. There's been a lot of buying opportunities. Um, but I mean, just... The fact that silver in the mid 1800s was four bucks and you could have bought it 150 years later. Yeah, this is the oldest uh, market suppression scheme. I think Bixwer says it's 170 years old, probably, maybe older. And uh, I've done previous videos on, on talking about the Lunar series and why. Uh, that was one of my favorite series because it uh, marks the the Chinese New Year's commemorative coins from Australia marking the Chinese New Year's. And I, and I believe that silver is, I for a long time have believed that silver is going to be China's revenge. If you don't know the history of the Opium Wars and how the British demonetized silver to try to bankrupt China, you can review it. And we'll probably go back into that at some point. But it's been a long, long war. And I think that this, the silver suppressors are, are going to finally lose that war. Now, you know, what, where's the price of silver going to go when they lose control? Well, that's what the fundamentals, fundamentals are about. And so let's spend the rest of the time just talking about the fundamentals. And I'm just going to give you some rough figures. Hopefully that's not too bright. So I just asked a couple of questions. Uh, how much silver is there? In other words, now I'm not asking how much silver is there in the earth because silver in the earth, um, if it's recoverable, you know, that's a whole other factor. I'm talking about silver that has already been mined. Now, most estimates, if you average them all out, we're going to come around 50 billion ounces. In the history of the world, man has mined 50 billion ounces of silver. Is that right? I have no idea. It's probably pretty close. Uh, I was recent, recently doing a Bible study on the word silver, and I think uh, one of the, when David talked about how much he had amassed, uh, the number of talents he had amassed for building of the temple that he gave to his son Solomon, I think he gave him a million ounces of silver for the temp, building of the temple. So that's a tiny, tiny fraction of 50 billion. Uh, now, what is it worth at current prices? That's easy, $1.5 trillion. That's all the silver in the world. 
Now, we've talked a lot about how it's inaccessible because it's in landfills. Um, Newton's law, or whichever law it is, that things don't go out of existence, uh, is going to tell us that uh, silver is never made or destroyed. It's just simply relocated. And unfortunately, you can thank the people that have been spending 170 years suppressing its price. Now, when they first suppressed the price, I don't think they knew about electronics, obviously. It was just a scheme to bankrupt China. And because Britain had lost all its silver, because they wanted to buy a bunch of tea and pottery. And they had to come up with an idea of getting that silver. China didn't want anything. They didn't want to import anything from anyone. So they had no reason to use their silver. So the crooked banksters, what did they come up with? Well, we'll just demonetize it and bankrupt them. And that's what they did. But uh, so this uh, $1.5 trillion worth of silver is all the silver that's ever been mined. And the key question is not how much silver has ever been mined, but how much silver is actually in usable form, in bullion form. Now, the estimates, they I tend to be on the lower side. Uh, the estimates tend to go up to $5 billion. I think the number is closer to a billion and maybe even less. And that's pretty scary if you think about that math. But let's just give them that, say it's $5 billion. Uh, what's that worth? What is $5 billion ounces of deliverable silver worth? Well, it's worth $150 billion. That's not a lot of money when you think about the fact that the U.S. government is, is rapidly approaching the point where they will be running quarterly deficits of a trillion dollars. In other words, a $4 trillion a year deficit. We're not far from that. And we're sitting on a $35 trillion debt. Now, let's talk about the mining. How much is mined each year? These are just round figures as well that everybody throws around. But generally, and you know, we can talk about uh, the Silver Institute and their annual report if you want to learn about that go watch Bix Weir um, I've done videos on it many 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 years ago uh, how they change historical numbers they're changing the numbers of it you can't believe you can believe what the Silver Institute says about as much as you can believe what the US government says as far as economic statistics you can't believe anything they say but uh, they've been revising this for years and the general consensus is that about 800 million ounces of silver is mined every year. And about 1 billion ounces of silver is used up every year. So we're generally running about a 200 million ounce per year deficit. Uh, the difference between how much is used and how much is mined. Now, where does that come from? Well, supposedly people sell coins and it gets melted and, and uh, recycling and other stuff they put in that. But uh, 200 million ounces, you, you can run down. Let's say we do have 5 billion above ground in deliverable form. Well, what's that, 20 years? Uh, 25 years it would take to, do, uh, to run that to zero. And how long have they been running a 200 million ounce deficit? Uh, and then the last thing I put on here, just for fundamentals, what is silver's inflation-adjusted high? So if you want to find the inflation-adjusted high of something, you just go and type in on Google uh, Fed Inflation Calculator. And you'll pull up a simple calculator on the Federal Reserve's site that will uh, allow you to calculate what the price of something was at a certain year, what it would be today. So $50 high silver equates to about 200 bucks today. So if silver goes back to its all-time high in inflation-adjusted terms. Now, yeah, the figure that I ran was this 1979-1980 figure. Uh, I didn't run the 2011, of course. That's not going to yield as high a number. But uh, if you run $50 in 1979-1980, you get a price today of $200. That's just for silver to get back to its all-time high. Now, we know that gold, for example, um, gold is uh, gold made an all-time high of around $800, $850 back in 1979-1980. Uh, 
And by the way, a lot of people talk about the Hunt brothers and their manipulation. I've done videos on that before, but the Hunt brothers weren't manipulating gold. And gold ran from, what did it run? 35 bucks, I think it was pegged. 35 bucks, Nixon opened the gold window and it ran uh, 35 bucks to 850. So the Hunt brothers weren't buying gold and it still ran. So gold now at, we'll just say $2,400 for round numbers is three times its all time high, uh, nominal all time high. So three times the silver nominal high would be 150. So where should silver be right now? Probably around 150 to $200, all things being equal. But all things are not equal, um, not in any way. Things are getting really, really bad. Um, the U.S. is approaching a point where it's insolvent, if it's not already insolvent. And you've heard a lot of rumors recently about the demise of the petrodollar that Saudi Arabia did not renew some contract. I haven't investigated that thoroughly. There are some debunkers out there now on TikTok uh, saying that this agreement doesn't exist. Show me a copy of this agreement. I don't know. Uh, I've done a lot of videos on the petrodollar and it does appear whether this particular instance of the Saudis ending it is true. It is dying. And what's interesting about this, and this will be the last thing I'll say because I'll just ramble on forever, but I'll uh, pick it up on the next video. But the interesting thing about this petrodollar situation is that one of the reasons why oil is being phased out, or at least they want us to think that oil is being phased out, you know, these WEF lunatics and bug eaters and freaks, um, well, it's going to be phased out for what? For electric cars? Uh, okay. Uh, and alternative forms of uh, electricity generation? Well, what do both of those require? <laughs> they both require silver. So that puts them in quite a pickle. Um, if they're going to switch away from oil, uh, the petrodollar, then because of renewable, quote unquote, forms of energy, um, that's going to be a big problem. Uh, if you want to cover the solar panel story, go over to Bix Weir and, and look at his videos he's done on it. I think the number he's estimating is 600 to 650 million ounces of silver that uh, solar is going to use. Now, back in the day, back in my day, early on, it was photography, but of course that was phased out with digital imaging. But solar, wow, that seems to be a monster, a lot bigger than photography. Uh, I mean, 650 million ounces, that's almost the whole 800 million right there. What's left for investors? Virtually nothing. Now, I did a study recently, and I'll finish with this. I just did a study on the major silver sites. Uh, I think I looked at Atmex, uh, um, Silver Gold Bull, um, Silver Doctors, uh, SD Bullion, uh, maybe uh, JM Bullion and a couple of others, and went through how much silver they had. Uh, just a rough estimate. Uh, with Atmex, I came up, with, actually with almost all of them, I came up with roughly a figure of 250 million ounces. So I pretty much counted up all of their available 100 ounce bars, 10, uh, 10 ounce, five ounce, one ounce bars, and then boxes of eagles, boxes of uh, maple leaves, and added them all together, and I came up with about 250,000 ounces of available silver to be bought right now uh, that's in stock. Uh, interestingly enough, I went over to Gainesville Coins, which is uh, a seller that I fre frequented, and uh, they have an announcement that they don't have any inventory. They, you just have to order it. Uh, I'll cover that in a future video. but. The, uh, the main ones came 
came in for me, and I'll just say there's six of them, but there were four that I did. So that would, if, if we came in with 250,000 ounces, then we're talking about 1.5 million ounces of silver that your silver, your ordinary silver stacker like you and me can buy. So 1.5 million ounces of silver at current prices, we're talking five million, uh, $50 million. $50 million. Wow. So these are some crazy fundamentals. Now let's talk about... Uh, and that, Okay, I promise I'm going to end on this. Let's talk about uh, U.S. retirement savings. U.S. retirement savings is approximately $40 trillion, give or take. Now, traditionally, precious metal percentage of portfolio recommended on Wall Street for many, many decades has been uh, 10% or it may be 5%. Um, so if you take 5% of, we'll, we'll be conservative and say 5%. So only 5%, everybody's retirement. If everybody took their retirement and took 5% of those dollars and invested them in precious metals, how much would we have? So we have uh, $2 trillion is 5% of $40 trillion. And let's give $1 trillion to silver and $1 trillion to gold. So investors should be holding roughly $1 trillion worth of silver and $1 trillion worth of gold. How many ounces of silver at current prices is one uh trillion dollars worth of silver it is uh 33 billion ounces of silver so yeah that that's just an example of how skewed things are that's how out of whack prices are and how explosive is the rally going to be how much can you protect yourself if there's only this amount of silver, if I'm right, if there's about 1.5 million ounces of silver that's avail available to the public for sale, then that's going to be uh, just a number that can evaporate. I mean, someone could literally write a check for that and it's gone. And then there isn't any. Then how many is it? How much silver is floating around in the local coin shops? Probably not a lot. Because remember, that's a very capital intensive business. It takes a lot of money to run one of those. They can't just have scads and scads of metal lying around, especially not silver. They might have more gold lying around. But so probably not a lot of silver sitting around in local coin shops. We're talking an amount of silver that could just evaporate in an instant. So again, uh, the, the story hasn't changed. As we showed you, the story has gotten much, much worse. The US government has no intention of turning things around. I, I don't hear either candidate. I don't hear Donald Trump talking about cutting government. I don't hear Joe Biden talking about government or Joe Biden's stand in maybe i don't hear anyone talking about cutting the size of government so it doesn't seem like the u.s has any intention of going the other way and if that's the case then we're going to be looking at the hyperinflationary scenario where silver literally has no price and we'll talk to you next time